Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. And today we are making this crazy contraption, which is a lot of fun and something I've been thinking about making for a while, but uh, finally getting to it because hexagons are the bestagons. I have no idea what I'm doing here. So we are going to just experiment and play around and have some fun. I want to rip this in half and figure we can work with those pieces and then make a test piece that will go on. So let's find where the middle of this is. First thing I wanna do is rip down this board. This is a chunk of hard maple and I figured it would be a good test. Uh, we're going to rip this down. It's about a half inch thick, by about two inches wide-ish. It's a little bit less than that. If we rip it down, we'll end up with a couple boards that are a little bit less than one inch thick or wide by about a half inch thick. Um, so this will be a, just a simple test that I can then play with. So we're going to rip it all the way down um, and then cross cut it so I get two pieces because I'm going to need 12 chunks out of this. And because I'm experimenting, I'm probably going to need more. I'm going to put those up side by side in the, uh, the end vise and then that will allow me to plane them down and get them exactly the same thickness. And it's very important that these be exactly the same thickness uh, because they need to ride against each other. And then, of course, always use your head as a third hand. Works phenomenally and uh, very pleasing. So once I plane down one side, we plane down the other side, and we make sure that they are 90 degrees to the face. Now, for the first cut, I'm just going to use my protractor and find out this is 60 degrees. Um, 60 degrees, hexagons. And we're going to cut off the end of two of the sticks and just have it as my, my test size. In the future, we're going to actually um, have the shooting board set up to do that. Um, and so on this one, if you want to see this, I actually have a video showing making the shooting board. Uh, it has this adjustable thing on here that I really love. And then you can move the fence in and out so that you can still have a nice tight connection to the, the, the shooting plane. Uh, I, I've been using this more and more. And for something like this, it is, it's phenomenal. But that will give you exactly and precisely a 60 degree angle. Now I want to cut um, pieces, and I don't know exactly how long I want them, so I'm just going to make something that's about that long. And I want to cut two of them so I can play with them and, and see how they go. And then I can shoot those little pieces and make sure that the other side is the exact same length. And I want these to be exactly the same length, one to the other. So I'll use one of them to mark out the other one and cut it down. And with two of these pieces, then we can do some of the experimentation. And I realized that uh, the length is good. I'm actually going to leave them a little longer so there'll be a hole in the middle. If I wanted to size them down a little bit, I could um, to get rid of that hole. But uh, for this one, I'm just going to leave the, the hole in the middle. The one problem I need is I need all of these pieces to be precisely the same length. So we need to make a stop so that we can shoot them all exactly the same length. So I need to create a stop so that I can put these on there and have them at the same point every time. But to do that, I'm going to need to glue something down. And I don't want to glue down directly to my board. So I'm going to put down some painter's tape that I can then glue down to that. I'll put some painter's tape on the other side of this. And I can glue down to that. And so now I have no problem with gluing that to that and having it locked right down on. With those blocks in place, we can then glue in one scrap piece at a certain distance in, and this will be the stop that will allow me to plane all of them down to the same length. And now we need to cut 12 of them because we need 12 of these. And actually, I'm going to need like 13 or 14 because I'm probably going to mess up a few. And so let's cut a bunch of them. So I can lay one out, and I don't care exactly about the length because we're going to shoot them to the right length. And so I can mark them all out at one time and then come through and cut them off. And some of them I can come out, cut off on this as if it's a bench hook. And then some of the shorter ones, I have to actually put them in the vise uh, so that it will hold them because they're, they are too short for the, the bench hook to hang off. So you can see in the vise, so we can get little pieces out of big pieces. And then we can shoot them all to length. And because we have that stop on there already set up, that makes it very easy to make them all precisely the same length. Um, I was getting a little bit dull on the shooting plane, so we need to sharpen that up. I'm trying to add that in here to show every time that I sharpen in a video, which isn't really that often. And the shooting plane is really only sharpened once every few months or so. Um, so I don't use it that much. So now that these all have been shot um, and are the same size, um, I ended up with a little bit of a fuzz on this because the, the shooting board stop wasn't quite exactly where I needed it to be. So I need to clean off just that, that fuzz on the end. And I tried doing a block plane. I found the easiest thing is just to trim it down with a chisel. 
Uh, these don't have to be absolutely perfect because the corners will all need to be uh, touched in just a little bit so they don't uh, run into things. So just trimming off all the fuzz makes them fit um, a little bit better. Now we need to figure out how this thing goes together because I've never made one of these before. So we're going to do a little experimentation and play around and see what we can find. So, okay. so here I'm trying to figure out how this goes together. I've seen it in my brain once before, but to see it in reality makes a bit of a difference. So I'm putting this whole thing together to see how do these pieces fit. Now that we have 12 of them, I need to know which pieces need to be glued to which pieces, because each of these are going to be glued into blocks of four. So there'll be three sides that come together. And I have to figure out which blocks need to be glued to which blocks. So there's the fun part. So I know these two need to be glued together and they're going to slide out this direction. So, let's get rid of you, and you, and you. So if these slide out this way, this pair slides out this way. Yes, so that means it's going to expand. So these two need to be glued to these two. So it means these go away, this goes away, that one's just there for supporting. So I need to glue them together as V's first. Fun, okay. Because this is the first one and it's just a test, I'm just going to be gluing these together with some super glue and then later I'll use some uh, total uh, tight bond, quick and thick. Uh, super glue is great for this because if they break off, then oh well, it's 30 seconds to glue them back on. And I can glue these V's together individually uh, with just some tape. Uh, I don't really matter, that it doesn't matter that they'd be perfect, they just need to be good enough. And uh, this is... Uh, this is a very weak bond, and it will probably break, as you will see later. <laughs> but uh, for what I need to do, this will do fine. So we just need six of these V's put together. And with the magic of super glue, they are done by the time I get to the end, and I can unwrap them and start putting these together. So we need to attach two of the V's together um, into a basically a weird-looking W. <laughs> And uh, this then gives us the chance to, to test and experiment. And so this I thought, let's just use some quick and thick. I probably should have used super glue on this as well because uh, I had to let the quick and thick set for a little bit. And uh, I, I, was, I was assuming 30 minutes or so and then I could use it again. Uh, but in all honesty, the, the strength only gets up to uh, where super glue would be after um, several hours. And I ended up breaking one of these as well. So I should have just super glued it and, and gone on with it. And uh, so we can actually test and make sure these will slide together before the glue sets. And just like that, uh, they do work until they run into other corners. And so there's a little bit of fiddly working in here, and I think I want to adjust some things on there. While that's setting up, we can take a look at how this comes off. Um, and it's really surprising um, how strong this is between the... Uh, the masking tape and the glue. Um, and so a lot of people like to use this for patterns. I don't like to use it for patterns because it's a bit thick, um, but for temporary gluing down of stops and blocks, uh, this works great. Masking tape on either side, super glue in between, and you've got a really nice strong bond. And then when it peels up, it's clean and ready to go. It is very, very happy um, how simple that comes out. So then, uh, once we can let the glue dry, um, I found out the glue wasn't quite strong enough, but I really needed to get the video out, so we are going to put a screw in these. Again, these are just test subjects. I'm probably going to be doing a better one in the future, and I may be um, doing some other interesting designs and making a, a, kind of like a box in the middle that opens up. Uh, some interesting ideas coming. And uh, so for this sake, I'm just going to put one screw in. So I need to pre-drill and countersink and put the screw in. And of course, they're brass, so you always get one that breaks off. Uh, yes, I did use wax on it, um, but it still broke off because they're tiny little brass screws. Uh, so I just used a little more wax and put another one in there. And uh, now we have three of these W's that are glued and screwed and glued together. Um, nothing special, but they're kind of fun. And uh, we can see how well do they go together. And they run together until the, the corners inside touch, and you just have to fiddle with them a little bit to get those corners passed. And then the whole thing slides in. And you kind of get this Star of David in the middle, which is interesting to see. And then the shape goes down to a triangle, and then they all slide together until you get this nice tight triangle shape. And I was really happy with it. They come together and they come apart, and it's a, a fun little design. So let's go ahead and finish this one, and I can put it up on a shelf somewhere, and then I can make a better one in the future. So I'm going to use some boiled linseed oil, paste wax, allow them to slide in against each other a little bit easier. And it is a very simple little thing with three blocks that slide in. 
uh, this is kind of fun to play with, and I think I'm going to experiment with some more on this and, and see how it goes. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. What would you think I should do next to make this a little bit better? Uh, the interesting thing is they, they're, it's a pain to take apart. It actually takes a lot of fiddling and pulling apart, and then eventually um, it starts to come out, and you're like, oh, yeah, it's coming. I'll pull a little harder, pull a little harder, and then whoop, oh, the pieces slide apart. And it actually works. So it's kind of an interesting little design. And I'm looking forward to experimenting with it more. This is one of the things I love about woodworking is you can always make another one and have a little bit of fun along the way. Yay! <laughs> so there you have it. I, I This is a design that has been rolling around in my head for a while. I've seen uh, this shape on flooring before and I thought, ooh, that would make a really fun puzzle because you could just reverse the backside and the two of them would slide together. Um, it's kind of a cool system and it's one of these things once it's together it's actually pretty hard to get apart and you got to work at it and well yeah you can see how it goes. Um, lots of fun but uh, it's one of these things I'm probably going to work on a little bit better because there's maybe better joinery and other things like that that I want to do through it. So um, I hope you like this. If you did let me know in the comments down below and I would love to see your thoughts and ideas. If there's something you think I should do better let me know that. So as always, I want to say thank you to everyone who hits like, comment, shares, and subscribes. That really does help out the channel. And I want to say a huge big thank you to everyone scrolling over to the other side. They are the patrons on Patreon. And I'm just without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, you can click a little link down in the description down below. Or you can click that little join button and become a uh, member here on the channel. There are special perks for both members and patrons. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more, well, you know where to go. So on that note, I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Um, oh, yeah, did it break? Yep. How many pieces? I'm just Yeah, I'm going to have to do something about this gluing because these end joint glues um, just aren't as good with super glue. Maybe I should do a test on end grain joinery. Hmm. The real reason I wanted to make these is they're a wooden version of my logo. Something like that? <laughs>